Uh, I'm Deborah Bagore. Uh, I'm a professor of language and literacy, and I'm also serving as the interim associate dean of undergraduate programs. Well, the uh, Critical Media Health Literacy, CMHL, um, we actually did quite a lot of work to, to make a, a big definition. And um, uh, people watching this, um, this video uh, may have read um, Aboriginal Adolescents, Critical Media Health Literacy and the Creation of a, of a Graphic Novel. The graphic novels, um, I mean, I think this has been, certainly for me, it's been a really um, exciting way to uh, demonstrate um, what we're finding um, in the research. Doing something like the graphic novels as a way to disseminate information is something that's far more friendly um, to groups and we at first thought well we would put together the graphic novels um, and then as we got talking we thought well no it's far better to go out work with groups of adolescents teach them something about what our findings have been um, about media and about how they're being influenced um, by the media and then get them to create um, the graphic novel because this is a generation that's keen on graphic novels, they're very keen on visuals. Um, so we've done a number of things. So the um, the first one was, was this one, uh, Chasing Adland. It's about um, marketing um, and specifically this one is, a, is about a girl who's been made to feel um, very unpopular because of her glasses and her clothes, and um, she goes to a she goes to a mall uh, called Adland, and then discovers the truth of you know of what uh, big corporations are actually doing. So this one was um, was certainly was a success and disseminated some of the ideas about media that media is everywhere. Um, that media is a construction, that media leaves out parts that, you know, that it doesn't want you to think about, that there are various hooks, so you want to be like everybody else, um, you know, you want to be prettier, you want to have better clothes, they're, they're prepared to hook into all your fears about yourself in order to, to, sell, their, uh, to sell their product. And we worked with a group of um, indigenous teens um, in the interior, um, and they um, were interested in advertising, um, but they wanted to tell a very different kind of story and they wanted far more um, cultural content. Um, so once again, we ran, a, we ran a workshop every morning for, uh, for five days um, in order to create this story. The school board that we were working with has a very active um, indigenous uh, circles um, with teens working with each other. So this was six Aboriginal teens. Um, one of the best ideas they came up with here was in order to have cultural content, they decided to put the trickster figure of Coyote into their story. And Coyote was the, um, was the figure who was responsible, in much the same way as Adman here, who's a very kind of a, a, general, a generalized kind of villain. But Coyote here is the one who is trying to trick these, um, these young people into, you know, buying very expensive runners that they can't afford, um, into, you know, becoming a model and being willing to do anything in order to be in a, on a billboard. Um, and then, because the trickster is also a shapeshifter uh, figure, they decided that um, Coyote would shapeshift into the advertising executive, and the advertising executive, of course, looks very much like um, like Coyote. So this is this was not only a way to disseminate information, but of course as they create the stories, they're having to think all the time about what's the health content going to be, what's the media content going to be, what are the lessons about, you know, how people are hooked and how can we work in more of that content. And then with this one it was all the cultural content. So who is, you know, what are we going to call these people? Um, the, uh, the names of the characters are drawn, the names are drawn from local traditional names um, from the Shuswap Nation. Um, and they were, you know, they were very concerned about what's in the, what's in the background um, and um, to, to keep it very, uh, very realistic for that area. So not only it's been created by adolescents, but it's also for adolescents and it's for them then 
to learn about uh, more about media and about how media influences you. The other thing is we have to listen to our teachers as well and they are, they've been telling us that they really like getting these books but they would like to be able to do the whole process however none of them has money thousands of dollars to hire an artist. So the project that we're currently doing is once again up in the interior in a, in a different place um, and we are there looking at how you could roll this out this kind of project out in a, in a class in a full class. So we're in a First Nations um, class, a program that's, which, which is just for First Nations um, kids, and they are they are creating the stories in small groups. So there are a variety of stories coming, and then we paired them up with um, with another high school, which is a, a an art magnet school uh, with a mix of Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal artists who will then be collaborating with the writers in order to produce the, uh, the comics. We find that they're very interested and they're very keen on seeing their, their work come alive. So it's not just a story, but it's a, it's a graphic novel, comic book style graphic.